All right, hello, wine drinking people. We are back. It's Wednesday, March 9th, and a lot of stuff to get through here on the What I Drank Yesterday, man. Finally going to get caught up to today, hopefully. But uh, Saturday, we actually had a couple suppliers in the store Saturday, and that hardly ever happens. But when you have committed salespeople like Deidre Connolly from Boisset, the Boisset family of wines, she's out working on Saturday afternoon, man. And we had a couple people from uh, the Boisset family. Uh, we had Neil Rain, the export director, and Stephanie Putnam, the winemaker for Raymond Winery, another good old friend from Napa Valley. And, uh, you know, this Boisset family of wines, which was the largest producer in Burgundy, has become the largest family for all winery in the world with John Charles Boisset marrying Gina Gallo, which Gallo was the largest family-owned winery in the past. So merging them together, they may need a team of legal experts to make the documents for this marriage but the largest wine producing family in the world, John Charles Boisset and Gina Gallo. Um, all right, well, some great stuff. We're always happy to taste the wines of Boisset. You know, this is a uh, firm that you know, used to be known for inexpensive wines from the Macon and Beaujolais. And today, well, they have Domaine de Vougeray, which is their estate bottle, their domain stuff. Then they have a bunch of other ghost labels. They bought Bouchard Anifuse, a very old label, and Mommy Song. Well, everything but Clos de Tarte, the Mommy Song family still owns that. But uh, some great stuff under these Negos labels and some great stuff under this Domaine de Vougeray. Everything in this portfolio either biodynamically farmed or on its way to being bio biodynamically farmed. What does that mean? These guys are out to produce the best quality wines they can. You know, one of the, the only way you can produce great wine is in the vineyard. And, you know, you hear people talk about, you know, winemaker this, winemaker that. Well, you know, unless you've got a great viticulturist, Unless you're doing good work, work in the vineyard, the winemaker can't do any better than what God gives them. However, the winemaker can screw things up. So I don't want to underlie, you know, the importance of the winemaker because, you know, great winemakers are the ones that are responsible for the best wines in the world and uh, along with the great vineyard sites. All right, enough said about that. Well, we had some good wines. Let's start off with the stuff from Burgundy. We had uh, the Bouchard Anifis, Merceau, Cuvée Signature. Which, uh, this is a blend of the select lots, the better fruit. It's not a premier crew, but they're trying to highlight some of the better vineyard sites in Merceau for this and for the other wines that they create under this Cuvée Signature one, uh, label. This wine had nice richness on the nose, uh, apple, lemon, citrus, a nice minerality uh, signature of this collection series. And, um, you know, this is a nice round fruit on the palate. Merceau, the most California Chardonnay-like of all the uh, Burgundian appellations for whites in the Cote de Bone. And a slightly oily texture on the tongue, another thing that Merceau is known for. Nice freshness, a hint of butter toast and zesty minerality on the finish. Very nice. Next up, the Mami San Merceau, Merger de Monthly. And uh, this is just a Leo D. It's not a premier crew, but a little tangerine and orange citrus notes, honey and floral highlights to the bouquet, a little baked apple and peach pie there. Uh, nice concentration on the tongue, a bit more opulent and a little bit more oily and the texture there, a long mineral lace finish. Really nice, maybe just a touch better for my taste than the Bouchard on wine. Okay, next up we had a Chasson Marache. This is a Premier Cru Morgeau from Bouchard and notes of vanilla spice, creme caramel to the pear and apple fruit, a lemon drop candy citrus there with a Nice stone minerality, nice fresh pear and apple fruit on the tongue with a texture of skim milk and lightly spiced oak, uh, light toasted oak spice, a nice freshness and nice minerality showing through on the finish there. Very good bottle of Chasson Montrache from 06, a very forward and drinkable vintage. All right, next up to Milan Avant Les Caves and uh, Beaujolais, one of the most underrated of all the wine producing regions in Burgundy. Oh, is it in Burgundy? Is it not in Burgundy? Well, it's at the southern end of Burgundy. Well, you know, some people don't consider it part of Burgundy, but if you look at all the classic wine books, Beaujolais is considered to be in the geographic region of Burgundy, but it's really an appellation unto itself, Beaujolais. And the great the grape they use here, Beaujolais Gamay, very different from Pinot Noir, even though old Beaujolais, to me, taste very Burgundian, very much like old Cote de Nuit or even Cote de Bone Reds. But uh, this wine, the Montano, a separate facility where they make and vinify these single crew Beaujolais, uh, no semi-carbonic maceration, which is something, it's a technique used in Beaujolais to make forward fruity wines. However, it does rob them of their ageability. So these guys use open top fermenters, neutral oak. Uh, this is a single vineyard wine, uh, very intense bouquet, lots of herbs and fresh uh, earthy notes, cherry, strawberry, jam-like fruit, intoxicating 
bouquet. Lovely zesty mineral spice on the tongue with a, a good amount of that light ch red cherry and raspberry strawberry fruit. Smooth fine tan tannins and long fresh finish. Really excellent bottle of wine for $25. As I mentioned, one of the great values in Burgundy today, Beaujolais. All right, next up we had a brewery from Chateau de Peru. And uh, this wine, another stunning little value, man. $11 or how much was that? $15? $17.75? Oof. A lot of dried herbs, fresh earthy nuance of the nose, cherry and strawberry fruit. Very complex bouquet. Lovely balance and complexity here. Nice structure. Every uh, uh, The tannin showing up at the end. But in a nice savory finish, really nice bottle for under 20 bucks. All right, then the Jean-Claude Boisset Gevray Chambertin. This is uh, Jean-Charles's father, and uh, the best wines go into this label. And uh, some really good stuff, 05, a great vintage in Burgundy. Uh, they haven't offered Gevray Chambertin until just recently. Uh, fresh earth and herbal nuance, some truffle black raspberry fruit on the nose. Nice amount of stuffing here on the tongue. Uh, nice touch of exotic spices and a lovely fresh finish, echoing the nuance in the nose through the finish. Really nice stuff. All right, and then a few wines from Raymond Winery. Raymond is a winery uh, that the uh, Boisse family bought in Napa Valley a few years back. And the R Collection, uh, kind of one of their entry-level labels, this Field Blend Lot 7, a blend of Cabernet Merlot, Petit Shiraz, Infidel, Carignan, Mouvedre. Nice peppery uh, note to the nose, fresh berry pie fruit with some nice floral notes. A light and fruity wine, very simple but very pleasing. Um, most of the fruit comes from the Paso Robles region. For 13 bucks, nice little crowd pleaser. Next up, the Raymond Napa Sonoma Lake County Cabernet. And as I thought, this was a new wine for them. I'd never seen it before. Uh, the first vintage, and a great vintage to come out with a new release, 2007. A nice amount of herbal nuance, some nice black earth and cigar box spice, smooth red currant and cherry fruit with a nice hint of fresh earth and lightly toasted spice showing up on the finish. Nice balance. A nice little Cabernet Sauvignon in that $20 price range. Then the Rutherford Cabernet Sauvignon. This is their estate vineyard, all organic and biodynamic farming here. And a lovely currant and plum fruit here on the nose. A nice hand of fresh plowed earth and cigar box spice showing. Classic Rutherford dust and uh, firm tannins. Starting to mellow out a little bit. But uh, some really nice stuffing here, nicely balanced wine, and uh, a good example of Rutherford Cabernet Sauvignon. Only 700 cases produced. Wow, for $28.50, really nice little Cabernet. Next up, the Generations. This is Raymond's top wine. This is a wine that's been getting kudos from the press for years. A bit more toasty oak spice, and a boysenberry, blackberry, black raspberry-like fruit, hints of dark cocoa. This is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. And it's a vineyard selection, which changes every year based on where the best fruit's coming from. Uh, a really nice amount of cassis and currant berry fruit showing sweet tobacco spice on the palate, fresh earth and minerality. This wine's got it all. Excellent bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon for 41 bucks. All right, well, next up, we had Ricardo Penalba, the owner of Finca Tura Milanos in. 